Welcome, age of vintage society. An indomitable spirit, a great acting talent. Suzanne Plechette had it all, but having talent doesn't equate to success. The actress was born into a family of parents who were into show business and had more acting training than most actors and actresses. But this wasn't enough. Suzanne lacked that extra bit of luck to push her career to the next stage. She also lacked that bit of luck that would let her have a great love life. In fact, her love life was scandalous. Join us as we look through the life and scandalous love life of Suzanne Plechette. The iconic bedroom scenes of Suzanne Plechette and Bob Newhart. A look behind the chemistry. I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button. Big Mouth, Jerry Lewis said as he described the delectable actress Suzanne Plachette, and it is one of the best descriptions of her ever. Suzanne liked to talk, and she didn't just talk, you wanted to listen to what she said because it was so full of wit and her voice. Phew! It's a romantic voice, we tell you. That husky voice is irresistible. No wonder the Boston Globe described her voice to be sultry. Mix the voice with her open and direct nature and you have the best guest for any talk show ever. No wonder talk shows were always looking for her to come on their show. The woman was a walking rating booster. The best overall description was from a reporter who said she was an earthy dame an Auntie Mame who isn't afraid to tell a dirty story. She was also not afraid to call out politicians too. On a talk show, her first immediate answer was retired, when she was asked the persistent request people wanted Governor Reagan to do. It was this attitude that led her to her best work yet, or second best work, the TV series The Bob Newhart Show. Arthur Price, comedian Bob Newhart's former agent, saw the actress on one of the talk shows she went on as a guest, The Tonight Show. After seeing the show, Arthur was certain she was what was missing from their proposed The Bob Newhart Show. Arthur called Bob and told him that he had found the woman to play his on-screen wife. Arthur was right on the money, and he had a great sense of spotting talent too, for when it came to pure acting skills, Suzanne was up there with the best. The woman had range. She could act in melodramatic films, horror films and comedy. Her performance in the comedy film Golden Fleecing led her to receiving positive reviews. Critics just couldn't have enough of her genuine comedic sense. The woman could also play sexy roles too, and this wasn't hard as Suzanne was a walking bag of steaming sultriness. She put the sex in sexy and her legs, goodness gracious, she had a toned body that went well with her beautiful face that looked as though it was carved by beauty itself and her raven dark hair. Don't let us get started on her attractive prim raven dark hair. With her talent, beauty, she was always going to deliver as Emily Hartley, the funny, beautiful and smart career woman wife of Bob Newhart, who played a psychologist in the Bob Newhart show. Suzanne wasn't intimidated by the experienced comedic gurus who formed the supporting cast of the show. She was able to play her role well as The Rock, the stable person among the comedic co-workers, eccentric patients of her on-screen husband, and her neighbour, Bill Daly, who was slow to understand everything. When Emily gave that iconic don't-try-it stare, even the audience had to fall in line or suffer her clever, sharp-tongued retorts. And there was the iconic bedroom scene where the two of them went over the events of their day and found solutions to the various problems they encountered. The audience so loved those scenes that they gave the set a standing ovation during the show's last episode. Bob commented that the live show audience didn't even know he and the sexy actress were already on the bed before they began to clap. It was strange to see human beings clap for a lifeless object. This was because of the quality of the scenes and the lessons the audience must have been able to draw them. These bedroom scenes and the show's overall quality were so great, so impactful, that the audience wasn't checking why Emily and Bob didn't have any kids, just like the other regular TV series they watched. This made the show different from the rest of the family TV shows of the time. Usually the focus ends up being split between the parents and children, so in this show the audience was completely immersed in the life of Emily and Bob. 
However, the show didn't gloss over children in the show. In the first episode, they portrayed a couple who were trying to have children before deciding to adopt. The adoption didn't work out as they had to wait. The issue of children wasn't brought up again, and when the director tried to work children into the show, Bob subtly threatened to leave. Perhaps he felt he and Suzanne were enough to carry the show. The bedroom scenes were something the audience was already used to. There was a radio show, The Bickersons, which had Don Amici and Alice Faye spending most of the show in bed, talking in low voices as couples do in the bedroom. Bob, praising the genius of those scenes, said, It filled out our relationship and the audience loved it. The scenes, despite being repeated throughout the show, weren't forced. This was due to the acting chops of both Suzanne and Bob. They had an on-screen chemistry that made the scenes look realistic. Plus, being friends in real life helped them to be in sync. It helped that the sexy actress was dedicated to her craft. However, being a hard worker didn't mean she was completely immune from the failings of a Hollywood star. She also had her moments of scandals, especially in her love life. Well, we can't say we are surprised, considering love has become a normal struggle for the sexiest stars in Hollywood to struggle for love. Just as we have always done, we will take you on a trip of her not-so-stellar love life. Suzanne Plechette was born on January 31, 1937, in Brooklyn Heights, New York. Her parents were in showbiz, with her mother being an artist and dancer known as Geraldine Rivers, and her father the stage manager of Paramount Theatre in Manhattan. Suzanne's father eventually rose to become a network executive, so it isn't surprising that the actress took the showbiz route, as she said she was weaned on show business. The actress enrolled at Manhattan's High School of the Performing Arts and went to Syracuse University for a while before transferring to Finch College. Afterwards, she went to the Neighbourhood Playhouse School of the Theatre in New York and was under the tutelage of Sanford Meisner for two years. Then it was time for her to fly, and it came soon enough. She had her Broadway debut when she was twenty in the Broadway show Compulsion, which was a novel adaptation of Maya Levin's novel. Then Suzanne was on a roll, and soon she was already getting bigger parts. She replaced a prominent actress to play Annie Sullivan in the Broadway show The Miracle Worker. It kept getting better for the actress. She was hired to play a part in the Golden Fleecing Broadway show, and it was on that show she met Tom Poston. The roles kept coming in, and soon she found herself as one of the cast of The Geisha Boy, which became her debut in Hollywood films. Like The Golden Fleecing, the film was also a comedy, but it wasn't only comedies the actress could act in. Her skills were far superior for her to be one-dimensional. She took on the sexier roles, too. She was the sexy librarian who got into trouble for putting up a sensual book in the library and ended up falling in love with Troy Donahue's character. It wasn't the only sexy lover-girl role she got. She played a nymphomaniac who had the time of her life sleeping around, but ended up being alone. The actress also tapped into her innocence as she starred in three Walt Disney films. However, the film that was the most iconic out of all the films was Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, where she was not the main character. Still, she managed to thrill the audience with her short yet impactful performance as the selfless teacher who gave her life to rescue one of her students. But if we are being honest, she didn't have much success as an actress in most of her films. Her critics always said the same thing. They said that the film she featured in didn't deserve her, but it didn't mean she was blameless too. The actress was also accused of being too melodramatic in one of her films. Also in A Rage to Live, where she acted as a nymphomaniac, she didn't bring much passion to her role. It was a bland affair, but even the most talented stars had their off days. Despite her career struggles, her talent still shone enough for her to impress the big-shot comedian Bob Newhart and play his wife in his show. It didn't get better for the actress in her personal life too. She moved from one disappointing relationship to the other, and it wasn't for lack of trying. Suzanne was sexy and talented, but having luck was a different thing entirely. Her high-profile love life began with the beefcake Troy Donahue, a man many people agreed couldn't act. If Troy Donahue could be a movie star, I could be a movie star, a star said in the film A Chorus Line. It was harsh, but it was true. Troy came from showbiz with his mother, a retired theatre actress, and his dad, the manager of General Motors' motion picture department. 
In a way, his artistic origins mirrored Suzanne's own. Suzanne was introduced to showbiz early, and at a young age, Troy was meeting stage performers. But that's where the similarities between the two ended. Suzanne's parents encouraged her, as she was able to attend acting schools early, but Troy's parents? They didn't want any of that acting stuff. They wanted their son to become a doctor or lawyer. Anything apart from acting which they felt was an unstable career choice. You can see where they were coming from, but acting called Troy, and he certainly has the looks for it. Troy was a walking piece of art with his muscular body, blonde hair, and a beautiful face. Filmmakers play to this rather than helping him hone his talent. They had no motivation to help with the man's acting as his handsomeness sold movies. Put Troy in a film, and women would rush to see the picture. The ladies couldn't resist a slice of that hunk, and turned out the delectable Suzanne didn't mind a slice. Heck, she took the whole pie. The two of them grew from being the love interest in the film Rome Adventure to becoming a couple. The way they evolved has always confused the media with different reports flying all over. Some said it was Suzanne who first introduced herself to Troy. Another outlet claimed Troy was the one to move to Suzanne. There were even reports that said an agent introduced them to each other, while another said they met on set. The contradiction that their relationship generated was out of this world. You wouldn't even know who to believe. Some of the news even claimed Troy was a high school dropout. Imagine, nothing could be more false. Troy went to a military academy in New York with aspirations of joining the military, but a knee injury put an end to that dream. However, he went to Columbia University to study journalism before training for a short while under Ezra Stone. The bottom line is Troy was educated. While we may not know who initiated the relationship, it is clear that they married, and it is clearer that that didn't work. This itself led to another round of contradictory reports in the media. Media houses became split. Some claimed that they had already predicted the marriage wouldn't work, as the two stars were fundamentally different. Another said they were too in love with a divorce unlikely. When the two divorced months later, no one was sure what caused the divorce, and the actress's statement didn't exactly provide answers. Troy was a sweet, good man. We just were never destined to be married. We just didn't have the same values. But I'm not bitter. He taught me how to laugh, Suzanne said. So with the gap she left, people tried to fill in the gaps. Some ran the story that Troy was having an affair with Connie Stevens. Other people blamed the sexy actress and said she was in love with another man during the marriage. Some groups even took it further by saying Plachette only married Troy for the publicity. Before being with Troy, Plachette didn't enjoy the same widespread media attention some of her fellow stars did, as if the angle of Suzanne being a user wasn't enough. She was portrayed as overbearing and too career-oriented. News claimed she was trying to change Troy, forcing him to dress more appropriately, avoid some friends, prevent him from playing pool, and so on. It was a mess. Everyone was saying anything, and some of these things hurt Suzanne, especially the one that said she cared more about her career than she did her husband, especially when the real reason for the split was more sinister. Suzanne's friend let slip a dark secret. It seemed that the handsome-looking actor wasn't so divine. Allegedly, he had a restless hand that he used against his women. Valerie Allen, his second wife, left him because of cruelty. Still, the news about the two didn't stop with the media trying to explore the impact the divorce had on the two once starry-eyed couple. According to some outlets, Suzanne didn't have a care in the world, and the same went for Troy too, who was allegedly seen with other women. Some outlets said otherwise. They said the sexy actress Suzanne wasn't ready to enter into a new relationship, and Troy became a recluse. Whatever the truth was, the fact was the two went on to remarry. Suzanne married an oil magnate, Tom Gallagher, and left Tinseltown, which showed that she wasn't one to put her career before her marriage. But we admit marrying an oil magnate makes certain financial decisions easier. However, she didn't stay away for long, as her husband told her she was getting boring and needed to resume acting. Her job didn't get in the way of her marriage, as she and Gallagher remained married until his death from lung cancer. If only the actress knew that a similar fate awaited her too. Not long after Gallagher's death, Suzanne remarried. This time it was her once-upon-a-time sweetheart, Tom Poston. 
Poston and Suzanne worked together on the Golden Fleecing and on the Bob Newhart show. The two were grieving the death of their partners and ended up being together until he died from respiratory problems. Again, it was as if death was hinting to Pleshette of what was to come. Just like her two last husbands, Pleshette developed respiratory issues. The actress had a lump as small as a grain of sand and seemed to be fine as she was getting chemotherapy. Then suddenly everything went sideways. She got an infection. It got worse and led to pneumonia, which hospitalised her. At one point she couldn't even walk. But there was good news. The actress claimed to be cancer-free, as one of her lungs was removed. However, this joy was short-lived as the actress died a few days before her birthday. For the sexy actress, the curtains were permanently drawn, and we wonder if she had just been a bit luckier in life, she could have become more than the force she was. From her highs to her lows, we've seen it all. But now it's time to switch gears and discover how another Hollywood legend, Dinah Shaw, made millions with some cringy questions. Trust us, it's a story you won't want to miss. Click now. <laughs> 